Countries worldwide have developed national action plans to implement the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325, raising awareness of the unique challenges women face in conflict and post-conflict settings. In Kenya and many African countries, women are included as key stakeholders in peace processes with their voices being heard in negotiations and decision making. I will assure you that Kenya fully supports this global agenda. We have already embarked on the development of Kenya's third national action plan, that is the NAP3. This gives us an opportunity to leverage on our past achievement to define a more constructive engagement of women in future peace processes. The road ahead demands even greater ambition, strategy, and inclusivity. We must localize efforts, strengthen accountability, and establish robust mechanisms for tracking progress, measuring impact, and holding actors accountable for their actions. With real-time data, transparent reporting, and dedicated funding, we can ensure that we are achieving tangible results. While we acknowledge the progress made, we must also confront the challenges that remain. Women continue to be disproportionately affected by conflict and are often targeted by violence and marginalization. Furthermore, women's participation in peace processes in many regions remains limited, hence their needs and perspectives are still often overlooked in post-conflict reconstruction. Proliferation of small arms and light weapons compounds these challenges as it poses a serious threat to peace and security in our region. These easily accessible and often unregulated weapons fuel violence, exacerbate conflicts, and destabilize communities. They perpetuate cycles of violence that make women and children more vulnerable to harm. As we address these challenges, we must work together to regulate and prevent the proliferation of small arms, ensuring safety and stability in our region. This legacy of African women in peace building is a testament to the power of their resilience, courage, and leadership. We must continue to broaden the base for the inclusion of women at all levels of peace and security efforts, not just as participants, but as leaders and decision makers. Let us look into the future with confidence. We must build on this legacy to ensure that African women are not only included in peace processes, but their leadership is recognized and institutionalized. This requires the support of all stakeholders, governments, civil society, regional organizations, international partners, and local communities. As we move forward, let us remember that Resolution 1325 is not just a resolution for women, it is for all of us. It is a call to action for a more inclusive, just, and peaceful world. We must renew our commitments to implementing the Women, Peace, and Security Agenda. We must realize that governments um, must perhaps institutionalize some gender sensitivity analysis of their budgets and be able to figure out that in the resource allocation, as we look at our priorities, to what extent can we say that these resources are directed and targeted to issues that are sensitive to women? I speak to this because um, we cannot, in dealing with 
the women's agenda on Africa continue to be speaking about development partners supporting us. If we truly believe that our women in Africa and globally are important, and let me just focus on Africa, then let us start with our own parliaments. Let us start with our own county assemblies. How gender sensitive are the budgets that they approve, that they formulate and approve? Because this business of saying that we shall always depend on our partners is dangerous. There is something that is called donor fatigue. And uh, we could reach a point where we might come into contact with the donor fatigue sooner than later. So it is important as people from the continent of Africa, where a lot of these conflicts are emerging, to take a more serious look at ourselves, our processes, and our practices, and start allocating more resources so that we put our money where our mouths are. It is encouraging to see the great efforts that the UN is making. Um, all the partners, Kenya and other countries, towards restoring peace in the conflict-prone areas. Kenya leads in sub-Saharan Africa in putting in office key persons in leadership. I must, I must applaud the government of Kenya for putting women in leadership positions to speak on matters um, security. My counterpart, Ambassador Monica Juma, um, we have General Fatma, we have the CS currently on matters national defense, so Ipan Tuya, just to mention but a few. So this demonstrates that Kenya is actually leading within sub-Saharan Africa in showcasing and ensuring that women are actually at the decision-making table. Women and children are the biggest casualties of conflict in the world. Over the years, Kenya has experienced various conflicts, including inter-ethnic clashes, political violence, terrorism, and these conflicts has disproportionately affected women and children over time. We have tried to dig deep and we found the current data that we have goes back to 2021, where globally women hold, held only about 24% national parliament seats worldwide, which limits their influence on security, policies, and regulations across the globe. In Kenya, as of 2023, women at the National Assembly were, um, were standing at 23.8%. Women representative about 6% within the military forces and around 15% within the police and in the UN peacekeeping missions. The question is why? The National Gender and Equality Commission has also given a report that states women are underrepresented in security forces. As of recent years, women make about 10% of the Kenya Defense Forces and approximately 30% of the Kenya Police Forces. We have not gone yet to the private security firms. It is there pro profound to see the data sets and comprehend the reason for diminished gender responsive actions in peace resolutions, however, there is still need for proper data on the same issues. So then, can we develop our solutions and what we are looking for within the various data sets and find solutions within real-time data? This meeting comes at a very crucial time as we continue to strive for a more inclusive, uh, equitable, and just society. 
Gender equality is not, not, is not only a fundamental right, but also a prerequisite for achieving sustainable development. When women and girls are empowered, entire communities thrive, economies grow, and nations are prosper. The inclusion of women in peace building and conflict resolution is not just an issue of gender equality, it is a matter of ensuring sustainable peace. Women are powerful agents of change and their leadership in peace processes lead to more lasting and inclusive outcomes for communities and nations. Uh, I'm really proud of everything that uh, collectively in this room we're achieving and we need to celebrate those successes. So although these events might not feel um, quite like progress, it's really important that we're here and that you step back and you celebrate what you are all achieving. And, and we're very, very proud of that. And we're achieving progress here in Kenya um, and the UK stands ready to support the development of Kenya's third Women, Peace and Security Action Plan through the reInvent program and just a huge thanks to reInvent colleagues who are, who are also here today. It goes without saying that Finland is a strong supporter of the Women, Peace and Security agenda. Our recently revised foreign and security policy did not revise Finland's strong commitment to continue to promote the national and national implementation of the resolutions of, of the UN Security Council on Women, Peace and Security but let me also, especially in a country with the median age of 19, underline the importance of youth, peace and security, which is another, uh, uh, another task which we must take. Now, our own fourth national action plan, extending from 2023 to 2027, was developed in a broad-based stakeholder collaboration. Its key objective is to strengthen women's participation in the area of peace and security and thereby support efforts to build sustainable peace. Now, Finland and the Republic of Kenya, we have actually a long, fruitful history on 1325. For over a decade, we've supported Kenya in her efforts to drive forward the WPS agenda through development, implementation, and evaluation of Kenya's national action plans, the first and the second one. Let me note that when Kenya was preparing the first one, she got support from Miss Elizabeth Wren, who visited here, who was actually the first female Minister of Defense in Europe. Going forward, I have to say that I'm really, really impressed by what I see in Kenya. I really applaud the top female leadership in the Kenyan security sector. We have seen present and former cabinet secretaries of defense and let me also recognize the historic appointment of Major General Fatouma Ahmed as the commander of the Kenya Air Force earlier this year. This is really, uh, really groundbreaking. 